Hi everyone! Today I am going to be going over a couple of questions that are in your factoring review booklet. Uh, I tried to pick out the ones that I thought you would have difficulty with and I want to go over one of almost every type of question we've learned so far. But before we begin that, here is an overview of everything we have learned in this unit. We began the unit by reviewing how to expand, and that's really a grade 9 concept. It's when you have a number outside the bracket and you distribute it to everything inside the bracket. So it's basically the distributive property. Uh, the new topic that we learned about for this unit was FOIL. And FOIL is just another type of expanding, but it's specific to when you have two binomials. So something like 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 2. In order to solve that, you would take the first two numbers and multiply them, the outer, the inner, and then the last. Uh, a topic that is very closely related to FOIL is the special products. And there were two different types, squaring binomials and multiplying conjugates. Squaring binomials is when you have a binomial and it's multiplied to the exact same binomial. So something like x plus 2, all of it squared. And multiplying conjugates is when you have two, two binomials that have exactly the same terms. The only thing that differs is the sign. And uh, in that video, we went over a couple of patterns that emerge, but really, if you don't remember those patterns, it's not a big deal because you can just use regular old foil and answer those questions. Uh, then, after that, we learned about a very important topic of factoring. And factoring is basically the opposite of expanding. So expanding is distributive, foil, special products, and then the opposite of that is factoring. And we broke it down to you and broke it down for you into six main topics. Uh, greatest common factor, factoring by grouping, simple trinomials, complex trinomials, difference of squares, and perfect square trinomials. So my goal today is to try and give you an example of all of these sort of as a review and also try to pick the questions that are a little bit more challenging to help you go through them. So we're going to begin with question number 16 in part 8 of your review booklet and this is a greatest common factor question. So you should know that the very first step in any factoring question is you need to remove the greatest common factor. So we're going to begin with this question and I like to break it up into the coefficients and then the variables. So our coefficients in this question are 9, 27, and 18. And when I think of all of the factors of 9, 27, and 18, I can determine that the greatest common factor between all three of these numbers is the number 9. Then I move on to the variables. I have a to the power of 3, a to the power of 2, and a to the power of 1. What that means is the first term has 3 a's, the second term has 2 a's, and the third term has 1 a. So what is the greatest common number of a's that these three terms have? It's going to be the, the variable that has the smallest exponent. So it's going to be a to the power of 1. We do the same thing with our b's, b to the power of 4, b to the power of 2, b to the power of 3. The term that has the smallest number of b's is going to be b to the power of 2, so that is going to be my greatest common factor. Now what we're doing is we're essentially thinking this term times this term has to equal to this term over here. So I'm going to just think of it that way. What number times 9ab squared is going to give me the very first term? So 9 times 1 is going to give me uh, 9. I don't need to write that 1 down. a times a squared is going to give me a to the power of 3. b squared times b squared will give me b to the power of 4. And we're done our first term. We do the same thing again. 9ab squared times what term over here is going to give me this middle term? Okay, so we look at it in parts again. Um, 9 times 3 is going to give us 27. a times a will give us a squared. And b squared times 1 will give us b squared. And we don't need to write down the b squared. We can just leave it as is. Last term, 9ab squared times what term over here is going to give us this last term? So we know 9 times 2 is going to give us 18. a times 1 will give us a, we don't need to write that, and b squared times b will give us b to the power of 3. Um, 
Then we look at the inside of the brackets, a squared b squared plus 3a plus 2b. We know we can't factor that anymore, so this is likely going to be my final answer. And if you wanted, you could check your work by going ahead and distributing the 9ab squared into the bracket again to see if you get the same answer. Next up, we have question number 26 in part A, and this is a binomial common factor question. The reason I know this is binomial common factor is because I can see that I have two binomials in brackets that are exactly the same. And so to factor this type of question, we know the x minus 2 is common between both of the terms, so I'm going to factor that out. And then I ask myself, x minus 2 times what number is going to give me the very first term? And the answer to that would be A x minus 2 times what would give me the second term? And technically there's a negative 1 here, so it's going to be minus 1. And that's the end of that question. For our third example, uh, this is a question I just made up because I realized that there wasn't a lot a, of factoring by grouping in the review we gave you. But you should know that anytime you have four terms, you need to think of grouping them together and trying to factor that way. So I'm going to go ahead and group the first two terms and the second two terms and factor the greatest common factor. AX minus 3A, I can see that A is common between both of those. And so what's going to be left is X minus 3. And then in negative 2x plus 6, I can see that the negative 2 is common between both of those numbers. And what's going to be left is x minus 3. Now you can see that this is another example of a common binomial factor question. So we're going to go keep going and we're going to factor out the common binomial, which is x minus 3. And what's going to be left is a minus 2 to give us our final answer. Here is an example from part B, question number 26. I can see that we have a trinomial here, and again, the very first thing we want to do is factor out the greatest common factor. That is going to be repeated over and over again until you guys always remember to do that. I can see that I have a 2, a 10, and a 72, so my greatest common coefficient is going to be the number 2. I can also see I have a to the power of 3, a to the power of 2, and an a. So the smallest variable or the variable that's common between all of them is going to be a. And then what do I have left? 2a times a squared will give me 2a to the power of 3. 2a times negative 5a will give me 10a squared. And 2a times negative 36 will give me 72a. Now inside my bracket, I have a simple trinomial. And here is how I am going to factor that simple trinomial. I know that the very first two terms have to multiply to give me a squared, so it has to be an a and an a. I also know my last term is a 36, so I'm going to think of all the factors of 36. So we have 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 6 times 6, and 9 times 4. We've learned that when we have a bunch of factors like this, the one that you always want to start with are the ones that are closest together. So my initial guess is going to be to try 6 and 6 because those numbers are closest together. So I put in my 6 and 6, I make my double smiley, and I notice I'm going to get a 6a over here and 6a over here, but those numbers cannot be added or subtracted to get us the middle term of negative 5a, so clearly those numbers are not going to work. I am then going to go on and try to guess the next two numbers that are closest together. So um, that would be the 9 and the 4. Let's go ahead and put in a 9 and 4 and try the double smiley method again. 9 times a is 9a, a times 4 is 4a. Can I add or subtract these numbers to give me a negative 5? Well, if I put a negative here and a positive here, negative 9a plus 4a gives us negative 5a. So this would be the correct answer. To make this negative 9a, I put a negative sign. To put make this a 4a, I put a positive sign. And you can double check your work by redistributing and foiling and seeing if you get back to the original question.
Okay, so here we have uh, part C, question number 16. It looks like a complex trinomial, but again, we're going to begin by factoring out the greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor here would just be the number 2, so we would be left with 8a squared minus 2a minus 3. Now we have a complex trinomial. So in order for us to factor this, I'm going to make two brackets, and I'm going to look at the very first number, which is going to be the number 8. And I know all of the factors of 8 are 1 times 8 and 4 times 2. So the numbers that are closest together that I'm going to guess first using our guess and check method would be 4 and 2. So I'll put in a 4a here and a 2a over here. Next, my last number is the number 3. And the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3. But here's where we're going to guess and check. So we can either put in a 1 and a 3 or we can do it the other way around and put in a 3 and a 1. And as you get better at these questions, you'll get even better at checking. But um, there's no harm in you putting in a number, doing the double smiley, and if it doesn't work, erase it and try it again. So just to clear up some space, I'll erase this part where we had all of our factor work. And we're going to go ahead and try doing the double smiley. Smiley face here or double loop, however you want to call it. 3 times 2a is 6a, 4a times 1 is 4a, and I'm trying to get a middle term of negative 2a. I can do that by making this a negative and making this a positive, because negative 6a plus 4a is negative 2a. So that means we have to put a negative sign here, a positive sign here, and that gives us the correct answer. Whenever you have a question with two terms and a minus sign, what you need to be thinking of is difference of squares. This is likely going to be a difference of squares question. Um, however, the first thing we want to do is take out a greatest common factor. So I see that I can take out the number 2 and I will be left with a squared minus 16b squared. And now let's take a look at these two terms that we have here. We have a squared, which is a perfect square. We have the number 16, which is a perfect square. And we have a minus sign. So everything is perfect for us to make this a perfect difference of square question. So to do this, we're going to make two brackets. The two numbers that multiply to give us a squared are a times a. The two numbers that multiply to give us 16b squared are 4b and 4b. And then you should know that whenever you're factoring a difference of squares, you actually end up getting two conjugates. So one of them will have a positive sign and the other one will have a minus sign. So I saved the best one for last. This is uh, part D, question number nine. And this is a trinomial, but whenever you see that the first term and the last term are perfect squares, 81 and 16, you should be thinking of it as a perfect square trinomial because it helps you to factor it, it, factor it properly. So we try to look for a greatest common factor. You notice there's nothing common between these three terms. So we're going to go ahead and think of this as a perfect square trinomial. 81 a to the power of 4, when I take the square root of that, I end up with 9a squared and 9a squared. And 16, when I uh, take the square root of that, I get a 4 and a 4. And then I'm going to assume one of them is a plus. Actually, no, I'm not going to assume that. I'm going to do the double smiley method and see what I get. So smiley face here, smiley face there. 4 times 9a squared is going to be 36a squared. 9a squared times 4 is going to be 36a squared. And we're trying to get to a middle term of negative 72a squared. So if I put an, a negative sign for both of them, then I will get that negative 72. So that means this will be a minus sign and this will be a minus sign. So that worked out nicely. We think we're done, but really, if this was a question on a quiz or a test, this question would be worth probably three or four marks, which means we can probably keep going. Um, and so the trick in this question is to recognize that the, the factors that you end up with are actually difference of squares, and you can factor them again. How do I know this? Well, take a look at the number. First of all, you have two terms. You have a minus sign. And both of the terms are perfect squares. So if I'm going to factor this first term, I'll try to write as small as possible because I tend to write large. Actually, I wish I could move everything over. Let's do that. 
Okay, let's go ahead and move everything over here just because I will run out of space. Okay, so I'm going to try and factor the very first bracket, 90 squared minus 4, 90 squared, I'm going to take the square root of that, it'll be 3a and 3a, and for 4, I'll take the square root of that, it's going to be a 2 and a 2, and whenever I have a difference of squares, the two factors that I get end up being conjugate, so a plus and a minus sign, and then we have exactly the same term again, so when I factor that, I'm going to end up getting exactly the same thing, 3a plus 2 and 3a minus 2. And what you could do is you can actually gather up the terms that look the same. So 3a plus 2 and 3a plus 2 can be rewritten as 3a plus 2 all of it's squared. And then 3a minus 2 and 3a minus 2 can be rewritten as 3a minus 2 all of it's squared.